let's pray. Turn to God and we come now in these precious moments. Yes. Thanking you for another opportunity to enter into your house and to bless your name. Pray now, God, again for a fresh anointing. Through this preached word, God, that you will be glorified. Salvation will become a friend of someone today. A closer walk with you, a relationship. Men and women of God will be restored and revived. Receive energy for the work that is before them. Cleanse our hearts and our minds. Forgive us for our sins. Bless your people. In the mighty name of Jesus we pray. Amen. We're so thankful this morning for another opportunity to the New Generation family and visitors that have joined in with us this morning to share the Word of God and hear what God has to say to us on this beautiful Sunday morning. If you would travel with me into the Word of God, into the Gospel of John, there in John, the ninth chapter, passage of scripture that I want us to see as relates to what one may be experiencing in their personal life, in their family setting, or even in the, your place of employment. Here in John chapter number nine, for time's sake, we'll read verse six and seven. It says, when he had thus spoken, he sped on the ground, and made clay of the spittle. And he anointed the eyes of the blind man with clay. And he said unto him, Go and wash in the pool of Siloam, which is by interpretation sent. He went his way, therefore, and washed, and came seen. I want to share as we look at this passage, I want to preach from the thought the subject this morning and talk about Jesus is a miracle worker. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. There are many of us in this room this morning, in our living rooms and our personal and private sanctuaries yeah. that could join in with me in knowing that Jesus is a miracle worker. There's no doubt that some of us right now are standing in the need of a breakthrough. There's some of us right now that's calling on the name of Jesus to do something marvelous and miraculous on our behalf. And I came to remind you today, even in your living room, even in your place of employment this morning, that Jesus will work it out for your good. Yeah. The scenery this morning, it helps us because uh, throughout the Gospel of John, Jesus has taken time after time to perform miracles. We're familiar with one that takes place in John chapter number two. Uh, it's there that Jesus is at a wedding in Canaan of Galilee. Is there that Jesus turns water into wine. Yeah, yeah. To teach you and I, even in the form of liquid, that Jesus can perform a miracle. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And so many of us this morning can bless his name in knowing uh, that we are here today because Jesus performed a miracle in our life. Yeah. From chapter number two to chapter number eight, Jesus performs several miracles in the life of men and women of God to show us uh, that he is not a biased God or one that will discriminate, but to show us that Jesus will meet you and I on any level or state of being and make a difference in our lives. But when we come into chapter number nine, 
the Bible says uh, these words. It says, and Jesus passed by. Yes, sir. One of the first things that, that always give me joy about this passage is that it says, and Jesus passed by. And I don't know about you, the generation and visitors this morning, but I'm thankful that Jesus passes by. And I'm thankful that Jesus passes by even without an invitation. I'm thankful that sometime when there are certain settings or parties or bridal showers or baby showers, there's an invitation that is given and sometime it may say plus one. But I'm thankful that with Jesus, he does not have to be invited. He does not have to receive an invitation. Aren't you glad that Jesus can come by your house and Jesus can come into your condition and your situation even without being invited? The Bible says he passed by and when Jesus passed by, one of the first things uh, that I see in the passage is that he sees a man and he sees the condition of the man. The Bible says uh, this about the man. The Bible says uh, that this man was blind. But what stands out even more that is critical, my brothers and sisters, is that uh, he did not live to be 20 years of age and then became blind. Uh, he did not live to be 30 and then became without his sight. What stands out about the text that, that blessed me so powerful is that the Bible says that he was born blind. Now that can be a tragedy or disappointment to any parent to give birth to a child, a mother, and then to know that that child was born blind. It's the cry of every mother that their child will be born healthy. But this boy was born blind. Puts limitations and restrictions on his life from birth because now he will be in the position where he will always need assistance. He will need assistance to learn how to navigate his way through his very own home. He will need assistance on how to be able to make ends meet. He will be identified even in his classes of being structured in a class that will be able to aid and assist him because of his handicap. He's born blind. Right there, I need some of us for this morning, wherever you're at, to just begin to thank God that your ailment or your chronic condition is one that puts you in the position that you can still tell God thank you. He's born blind. He comes home in this condition, even after a great baby shower. He comes home in the condition of being born blind, but. The joy of the text is that we will see that uh, not only is there the condition of the man, that there's the conversation about the man. Yes. Because in verse number two, it says this, and, and the disciples asked him, saying, Master, wow. because now, you know, the disciples have been walking with Jesus. They have shared with Jesus. And they ask the question, who did sin? Yes, sir. Because in the biblical settings of even Old Testament, when one was found to have an ailment or a disadvantage or a handicap, uh -huh. it came about because someone had sinned. Is this a parental sin? What is it that this father did that would bring about this condition upon his son? Uh, what is it that maybe the lifestyle of uh, the mother that would cause uh, this boy to be born blind? They, they, they have uh, this dialogue, they have this conversation about the condition of the boy, the man, and they say, who did sin? Uh, and many of us uh, that are listening this morning, we've had some conversations about our children. Yeah. 
Y'all talk to me this morning. We, we've had conversations about who they look like, who they don't look like. Y'all help me this morning. Who they behave like, who they don't behave like. Where did they get that attitude from? Have you ever asked yourself, uh, where did your daughter inherit the things that she do? Y'all talk to me this morning. Or how did your son become the way that he is, that there, there was some behavior movements that was inherited uh, from a family member or from a parent? And they asked the question, who did sin? But yeah. Jesus speaks for us. He helps us to be able to see because he says, uh, uh, nor neither has this man sinned, nor his parents. Thank you, Lord. Yeah. This, this has nothing to do with the biological movement of parents and son. Jesus says, I, I, I want to do something here. Uh, I, I, I want to make it where the works of God should be made manifest. Thank you, Lord. I, that, that word manifest, he says, I, I, I want to make it clear. I, I want to make it known. I, I, I want to show myself in the midst of this man's medical condition. I, I, I want to bring something up out of this that you cannot see on the human level to show you that I am a God that can perform miracles in the life of one that is born blind. I performed a miracle at the wedding, at the wedding in Galilee. I, I, I performed a miracle in the life of the woman uh, at the well. I, I'm one that can perform miracles. And now in the life of this young man, I want to show you that I am God. He's getting ready to perform a miracle and I need to remind some of us this morning that Jesus is still performing miracles. Yeah. He says, he says, I, I must, I must, I must do something. Uh, I, I must work the works of him that sent me. Uh, while it is day. Uh, for, for, for night will come when no man can work as long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. Yeah. And we need to be reminded that uh, we have uh, this assignment to be a light, yeah. a beacon light to let a dying world know that he must be born again. Yeah. A light to let people know that the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. Jesus teaches us here uh, that I am the light of the world and as long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. And so Jesus begins to make preparation to perform this miracle. And my brothers and sisters, what we need to see in our own life when we look at this passage of scripture this morning is that in many of our lives, uh, Jesus has performed some miracles. Jesus is in the process of performing miracles now. And the same Jesus that performed in the past and the present is the same Jesus that will give you a post-miracle in the future. Somebody ought to tell God thank you for moving on your behalf with miracles. Notice, notice what he does in the life of this man born blind. Uh -huh. If we can take a moment in our settings, wherever we may be this morning, and think about what do you believe in God to do in your life? Uh -huh. What miracle, what, what breakthrough are you believing God for? Maybe I need to take a poll this morning. Are there some of us that are believing God to do some things in our life this morning? You ought to tell God thank you and begin to bless the name of the Lord that Jesus is getting ready to move miracles and move mountains in your life. Listen, listen to the prepping and the preparation for the miracle. Uh, Jesus could have very well, like he did with others, just laid hands on him. 
Jesus could have met him in the condition, in the situation, like he met the ten leopards and tell them, you know, go show yourself to yeah. the priest. Yeah. Yeah. But here Jesus takes time and prep for the miracle that is getting ready to take place to teach you and I that there are times when Jesus will use things of nature to perform a breakthrough. It's right there in verse number six. The Bible says, and, and, and when they had thus spoken, he, he spat on the ground. Jesus spits on the ground. Now, 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 you and I would think that that would be nasty. Help me, somebody. We, we wouldn't think highly of that. But Jesus takes that that we would look down on, and he uses it to get ready to perform a miracle. And many times in our life, the very one that you look down on, or the object, or the thing, or the individual, or the persons that you look down on, is the one that Jesus will use mightily. There are some people that have been in the stage of prostitution, in the stage of drug abuse, in the stage of the world of trouble all around them. And they're the ones that Jesus are using mightily. There's some people that are petite and cute and divas that God will not use. But there are times when God will use those who are hurt or wounded and have been left out and forgotten by others. And Jesus says he is the one or she is the one that I will use mightily so that my name can be manifest so it can be known that I am God and beside me there is no other. He spits on the ground. He takes that that is on the ground and the Bible says and he made clay of the spittle. Look at, look at the prescription that he's getting ready to use to make a difference in the life of a man that was born blind. It seems as if there should be some type of doctor's appointment made. Maybe he should be down at Baskin Palmer at the medical center for eye institution. Maybe there should be several examinations done to determine what type of surgery will be needed to help to bring forth sight to this man. But down in the biblical setting, they won't be able to find an eye doctor. But aren't you glad that Jesus has healing in the hem of his garment? Aren't you glad that Jesus can make a major difference. He, he, he takes the clay of the spittle and, and, and he takes it and he mixes it together. Yeah. And when he stirs this together, uh, he takes that from the ground and the Bible says he anointed yeah. the eyes of the blind man. Can I stop right there? Because some of us in this room this afternoon or this morning need to be reminded that someone in your living room or your den this morning needs to know that the anointing makes the difference. The anointing can pull down strongholds. The anointing can make demonic forces have to back up off of you. The anointing can make demons have to flee. Show me one that has been through something. Show me one that has been wounded. And I'll show you one that is anointed. Show me one that has been ostracized or lied on and been defeated by the enemy. And I'll show you one that is anointed by God. Show Show me one with a voice that can help to lift up the name of Jesus. And I'll show you one that has been anointed to do a job for the Lord. The anointing makes the difference. The anointing will allow you to go through some things to get you to where God would have you to be. The Bible says he anointed the eyes of the blind man yes, sir. Yes. with clay. He uses that from nature 
and anoints the blind man's eyes. I thought I needed a bottle of oil. Y'all talk to me. I thought the only way that this anointing could occur was that I go purchase a bottle of oil and pray over it. He takes the clay. See, because anything that touches the hand of the master, when it touches his hand, I want to have a witness here. A major difference takes place. There's somebody today that needs a touch from Jesus. You need the touch from Jesus in your mind. You need a touch from Jesus in your finances. You need a touch from Jesus in your marriage. You need a touch from Jesus in your singleness. You need a touch from Jesus in your loneliness. You need a touch from Jesus in your depression. You need a touch from Jesus in your bereavement. You need a touch from Jesus in your finances. You need a touch from Jesus in your employment. A touch from Jesus makes a major difference. He anointed the blind man's eyes. Then after he anoints his eyes, he gives him instructions. Can I submit to you that, you know, he's, he's, he's still blind. Uh, let me ask you the question and I'll give you the answer. Can I be anointed and struggling? Yes, I can. Can you be anointed and still have problems? Matter of fact, the more anointing upon you, y'all know they help me this morning, the more problems come after you. The more anointing upon you, the more issues you will have to deal with you. The, the, the more anointing upon you, the more the enemy will try to attack you. The more God anoints you, the more people will hate on you. The more God anoints you, the more people will dislike you. The more God anoints you, the more trials you will have to face. Come here, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Because of your relationship now, you've been put in this condition and this situation. But God is going to bring you out. And I need to remind somebody that is tuned in today. Because of your anointing, you have gone through much daughter because of your anointing you've gone through much but I came to remind you this morning that your anointing is only going to set you up for a greater breakthrough woman of God your anointing is going to open up more doors for you the anointing is going to bless your finances the anointing is going to speak healing over your family somebody ought to begin to praise God and thank God Because of this anointing. He says, and he anointed the eyes of the blind man with clay. I need to remind you again, he's still blind. But he's anointed. He, he still has his chronic ailment. But he's anointed. What happens, what happens, new generation? What happens, visitors, when my anointing and my faith come together? Good God Almighty. What happens when my faith can take me into an arena that I believe that God is getting ready to do something marvelous and magnificent in my life? He's anointed. But now, he has to move. By faith. Jesus gives him instructions just as with the ten lepers when they were believing for healing. He said to them, Go show yourselves unto the priests. Yeah. And the Bible says, while they were on their way, on their way. <laughs> they were healed. Yes, sir. Can I submit to somebody today while you're on your way? God is working it out for thy good. 
Even before you get to your destination, even before you get to your medical exam, God has already performed a miracle of healing on your behalf. Even before you get to the car lot, even before you get to the point of purchasing the home, God has already opened a door on your behalf. He gives him instructions. Yes, Lord, thank you. He says, go. Wash in the pool of Siloam. Now, the, 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 the healing is not in the pool. But he wants to see how faithful, how obedient this man would be even in the midst of his condition. Yeah. I see something in the text. I see that preparation for a breakthrough is getting ready to take place if the man will only follow the instructions that have been given to him. And there are a lot of people that have missed their blessing and missed their breakthrough because they wanted everything in order and would not follow the instructions that were given to them. There are a lot of people that have been laid off from jobs and have missed out on things because they want everything in order and they are depending on human beings and not depending on God. God will have people saying, I'm with you, only to disappoint you. God would have people saying, I got your back. And they don't even have their own back. He says, go wash in the pool of Siloam, which is by interpretation said. And, and he went therefore and washed. And when the Bible says when he watched, he came up seen. Mm, yes. He came up with his sight. Jesus is a miracle worker. Yes, yes, yes. Somebody today needs to know that he's working it out for your good. He's making the, the path that was once crooked now straight. He's opening up the door of opportunity for sons and daughters, for children to be able to blossom in school. Somebody ought to praise God for a breakthrough for your children right now. Somebody ought to believe that God is pulling down strongholds and shackles are being broken off families and curses are being broken. Somebody ought to thank God this morning that he's already worked it out. For your family's sake. Yeah. He goes and he watch. And because he's obedient unto God. Yes. The Bible says. He comes up sin. Uh, and I want to remind us new generation and friends. That Jesus is still performing miracles. No matter what the condition may be. No matter what condition you or your family may be, Jesus will work it out for that good. Come on, wherever you're at, begin to give God some praise. Begin to thank God for His kindness and His goodness. Begin to bless His name for knowing that He is a miracle worker and that He will provide on your behalf. And that Jesus will open doors and he will make it where you can prosper in any situation or condition. He is a miracle worker. We prepare now to extend the invitation to discipleship. To offer the Savior to one that may be lost. To offer the Savior to one that may be struggling. One that needs a breakthrough of deliverance or healing in his or her life.
says, God, now I trust you. And I take you at your word. Wherever you may be, listening this morning, take this moment to extend this invitation. Jesus to you, to offer you the opportunity for you to have a relationship with him. But we want you to know that the word of God reminds you to this hour. What will it profit a man to gain the whole world? accepted you as their personal Savior. Wherever they may be, God, that they will ask you and invite you into their life. Forgive them of their sins. Cleanse and renew and restore. Bless God that they can get a first start in a relationship with you. We thank you for what you have already done for us. And we're believing you, God, for more souls to be saved. We're believing you for lives to be changed. And so God, bless now. I speak salvation over all. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. God bless you. We're so thankful for this opportunity to share the word and to share with you this hour. We're thankful for what God has done and what God is doing. Just a few announcements to the new generation family. We want to first thank you for your support, your prayers, the home going of our beloved daughter, sister, Carla Reynolds. Our prayers go out to the Reynolds and the Jenkins family, to all the loved ones to know that we're praying that God will strengthen you, that God will comfort you, and that God will continue to keep you. As we prepare, we also want to keep in mind know what we're facing in, facing in our country with the coronavirus, but we want to still be reminded to honor mothers on Mother's Day. And so men of God and people of God, 
prepare to be creative in your own homes of being a blessing to your family, being a blessing to mothers, and grandmothers, and wives. And so we look forward to Mother's Day. To the New Generation family, we said a few months ago that we would share a mortgage meltdown on the third Sunday in April. And we want to first thank God for those in our time of giving that have kept that day and have brought forth the mortgage meltdown gifts. But we've also extended the time to the third Sunday in May. And so we have to the third Sunday in May to share in that area. But by all means, if you're prepared and you're ready, just as some members have already done so, have brought forth their gifts, um, you can do that in advance, even before the third Sunday in May. And then thirdly, we want to keep in mind, we know that we have students in our church family that are graduating from high school, a few that have graduated from college. Uh, on the fourth Sunday of May, we will still honor and recognize them in some form. Uh, they will be honored on the fourth Sunday in May. Uh, and so to our graduates, we want you to still know that you will be recognized and blessed in the church family. And so please, let's keep that before us, the scholarship ministry. And please, other ministries, as you prepare to bring your gifts for them, please prepare to do that on the fourth Sunday in May. We're getting ready now to worship and giving. You can give online, you can give in the app. Um, we prepare to bring our gifts unto God in the spirit of thanksgiving, in the spirit of praise. I want to thank you for your continuous giving over these last few weeks, even when we have not physically assembled together. I want to thank you for being faithful in your giving. We're always reminded that if we're loyal to our supplier, he will always supply our every need. Let's pray. Turn to God, we thank you for giving time. Pray now, God, that you would open up our hearts and our minds to give bring our tithe, our offering, our gifts unto you in the spirit of joy. We thank you, God, for stewardship in our ministry. We thank you for the people of God being liberal in their giving. Bless their families. Bless and continue to heal. Keep us safe and sound. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. God bless you. God keep you. It is our prayer.